YouTube videos in three weeks and I haven't even shit the bed. Not bad, not bad. Sunrise happened about, blimey, half hour ago, 40 minutes ago, I expect. I was out, but it was hammering it down. I was going to bin it and go back home and then I thought, no, hopefully there'd be some good kind of atmosphere. I'll head down to the coast, come to a place, I think it's called Shark and Point. If it's not, I'll chuck it up on the screen, but I've shot it before. It's been raining, there's loads of clouds. I'm going to get down by the coast. I won't have the boiling hot sun in my shots. How wrong was I? <laughs> but what a lush morning. It's a beauty. And this is my office for the morning. Well, I say the morning, only a little bit, because I've got a new lens. Oh yeah, and it's lush. It's as sharp as you like. See if you can spot it. Yeah, I didn't want to travel too far this morning because I knew it was, it, it, I knew it was going to rain. And I didn't want to walk too far from the car because you get soaked and I'm just, I've worked outdoors all my life and I don't like being in the rain. So I'm going to hopefully get some lush light. I did not think the sun was going to be like that, but the joys of it. I'm going to have a walk about and see if I can get some shots and uh, see if you can spot me lens. You're going to be seeing the ugly cat in this video this morning because I wasn't over keen on the sound in the last video. I've got a little, this goes in my pocket and I've got a little lapel mic, which I put up here. I know it was blue, blue in a hoolie. That was the, um, that was the um, Berry Ed video. I quite like the couple of shots I got from that, actually. But yeah, I didn't like the sound from it. I don't know if this thing doesn't like the tone of my voice or what, but it just, that's the next thing I've got to work on is the, um, the crispiness of me voice in these videos. Or maybe it's just me accent, I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna have a walk about, see if I can find a shot. I'll just spin you around and show what we've got. It's a gorgeous little spot. We've got Berry Ed over there. This um, kind of ear is, I think, I think the Shark and Point is over there or something like that, or if this is it, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Sea clouds and sun. Look at that. That'd be a beauty shot from in there, looking out. The water gushing in there, look. Can't say I'm keen on that though. And neither would the wife. No way she'd be coming down here and picking me up. Look at that, look. What spot? Looking all the way down. I'm pretty sure, let's hide that sun. I'm pretty sure I did a video here a few years back. Well, mind you, with COVID, it's probably about 12 years ago. And I've got, I've got a lush picture. I can't remember if it was the evening or the morning, but I've definitely got, it must have been the evening actually, because the sun wasn't there. But if it's any good, I'll put it up on the screen. I just remember this, this bit of headland here and getting a nice shot. I don't know what I'm going to do because of this sun. Keep looking, keep looking. Right, I'm kind of thinking, I don't want to shoot south because the sun's up there. Unless that thing starts going behind some clouds, that ain't going to work. So I'm going to shoot, I suppose it's northish. Thinking having the sun kind of behind me, as long as the sun's behind me on the 180, so it doesn't interfere with my shots. I've got quite a wide angle lens. So I'm, that's why I want, to, I want to give it a bit of a test. See how, see what the sharpness is like on the edges and all the rest of it. I'm hoping you can hear me okay. Can you hear me okay? Is it recording that? Yeah. So I'm thinking, taking the shot from here I've got loads going on in the foreground and I've got this big rock over here and I've got a berry head in the background I'm thinking foreground interest rock kind of cool and there's some cool kind of clouds over there so hop myself over there get a shot going that way I mean, it's a bit blowy here and I don't want to end up falling in because I've got a new lens I'll tell you what if there's anyone down the beach or around the bay looking at me they're probably thinking what's in my fucking teapot <laughs> I quite like this composition Kind of looking up, bit of detail in the foreground here, loads going on here, headlands and then a cool sky, which I reckon I'll be able to pull out and edit in a little bit. See what I mean? So I'm kind of thinking like woof that. But it'd just be nice if I could get over the edge and not have this in the shot. If I go down there, I'm not going to be able to see that rock and I, it's just going to be out to nothing. So I might have a little look and see if I can get something from here. Ideally, on the corner of bloody there would be ideal, but I think I'll be going swimming. What I tend to do quite a lot, which you don't see, because I've got the camera in my hand, because I've always got my mobile phone. It's not the widest lens on it, but I'm always just kind of giving it that, giving it that, to kind of get a rough idea before I get my camera out of my bag. I don't like walking around with my camera in my hand, because I don't know if you remember back in one of my videos a while, well, last year, 18 months ago, I fell over. I broke one of my leaf filters, so I kind of keep the camera in my bag until I'm all set. And uh, yeah, going for this. Quite like this. So yeah, I use this. Kind of have a look about 
give me a rough idea of what I'm seeing. Could be a picture there somewhere, I reckon. My missus ain't gonna be happy, I'm after a new bag. I want a bag that opens on the side that goes on my back. Because I'm just about to put this thing down now and it's gonna get wet. And then when I put it on my back, I get a wet bag. I I've mentioned it before, but if you design that, I don't know if you can see the lens, can you see the lens? Woo! <laughs> Should have brought me blower. Everyone loves a good blow now and again. <laughs> Look at that, you can control the ISO by the ring on the end of the lens. <laughs> How cool is that? So, yeah, the problem I've got, you can't really see it. The sun's coming from over there. Everything on the right-hand right side of the frame is in shadow, but the sun's on the left here. Well, the sun's lighting up everything on the left, so I've got a hell of a dynamic range to deal with. The bright rocks and the shadow down here. Fingers crossed. All right, well... This is the Andale shot, hundredths of a second, F8. See, look at the shadows in the bottom left. Bloody sun. I've been working in the rain all week. I come out with a camera, now he decides to come out. Right, I'm going to have to try and bring these shadows up in post. Same shot, maybe a little bit lower, don't know. The only thing I am going to change is obviously my shutter speed, because I'm going to put a neutral density filter on. So I want a bit of a longer exposure. Sort of eight seconds would be nice. Oh, there's lush clouds. Oh, I could do it being closer to the edge, really. So at the minute, the kind of horizon. Was the horizon in the middle last time? Yeah, the horizon was too far that way. Oh, I hope I can pull the detail out in these rocks. Oh, I've got this kind of crevasse sort of disappearing down to the left-hand side of the screen. I'm going to put that rock right in the middle because I like that. Third sky, nice and straight. I'm pretty much going to jump for the filter I always jump for, which is my favourite. Uh, it's a 77mm thread on the front, if that gives you any ideas about the lens. My favourite out, Pro Glass IRND 6 stop. Oh yeah baby. Oh, another good point. You still recording? I hope you are. There's a reason why when I buy my jackets, I get these like the kangaroo pockets. When I'm doing shit, can put on my filters and chuck stuff in them. Well, so far I've been banging my guns for I don't know how long and I haven't even, even taken a picture yet. And I always chuck my filter in my holder before I bang it on my camera. The amount of times I've gone like that, oof, and it's falling off. In front of that lens, like. In front of that new lens. Oh, gosh. All right then, babies. Mode. Turn off my image stabilisation because I'm on my tripod. Did you hear that? Turned off the image stabilisation on my tripod. I don't know if I need to, but I have. Just in case, I don't know, it wobbles a bit, I don't know. Are you supposed to? Not quite sure. Let's go for F13. See what that looks like. Oh, there is me saying eight seconds. Two and a half. Do it a bit more than that, really. All right, where am I going to focus? I'm going to focus right there. Right, I'm going to stop him down. So we have 14, so I want a bit of movement here. Put it on a two second timer, straight on the tripod, 3.2 seconds. Ooh. It's not too bad, actually. Right, I'm going to chuck, up on, chuck it up on the screen now. 3.2 seconds, F14, ISO 100, focused on that rock in the left. Oh, I love that water in the foreground. That's just a nice bit of movement, actually, there, actually. But look at the rocks on the bottom right hand side. I don't know yet, I'm thinking. There's my histogram. Ooh, yeah, I reckon I can bring some detail back in them so it might look all right. Literally just moved my tripod. I don't know what, three foot to the left. I'm looking more like more down now. And I've still got that big rock out there. Yeah, that's a straight. I'm focusing on the rocks bottom right. Oh, it's so dark. It's a lot of dynamic range there, but again, 3.2 seconds, F14. It reckons it's one stop underexposed, but come on, come on, come on. Four seconds. One, two, three. That's better. A little bit of movement, a little bit of movement. I might be able to do something with that. I'm hoping in post I can bring out all the detail in these rocks because it's like reds and yellows. So what I'm going to do. Let's see what. 
First of all, I've got to take some clothes off. I'm roasting. Dun, 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 dun. Oh man, it's too hot. Right, hopefully you can still hear me. Hopefully that's better actually. It looks like it's closer to my mouth. To see if it will help with the shine on the rocks, I hardly ever use this bad boy. I don't want to get it out because it costs so much money. But Lee, pull your eyes out. See what difference it does to the shot, shall we? Right, here's the last shot. Put it up on the screen, very nice. Let's see if this polarizer makes any difference. One thing it is going to do, obviously, because it's a slightly neutral density, right, it's filthy. Um, it's going to extend my shutter speed for a start. See if the polarization makes any difference to this shot. Don't know why, I don't like using this thing. It's just almost like cumbersome. Again, I never put it on my camera. Got to admit, though, it does look kind of cool, doesn't it? A bit of whack gear. Right, let's bang him on. What was I on? Three and a half, four seconds, I said, didn't I? Let's give it some polarization. It's definitely, wait, eight seconds. Oh, yeah. It's definitely done something to that sky, which it would do, because I'm perpendicular to the sun. 90 degrees. Oh, 10 seconds. That's more like it. One. Yeah, come on. Come on. Oh, there's loads going on. This could be the shot. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the long exposure's making it look nice. Don't know, I quite like that. I. Oh, let's get all the gear out. I'm going to put a graduated filter in just to slow that sky down a little bit. I don't know if this soft's going to do much. A little bit. It's definitely done something for the clouds. 15 seconds. Yeah, it's just taking the peak off that right hand side. Oh, it's taking a little bit off the rocks as well. Like that, like that. 15 seconds, F14. Got my Lee Pro Glass on. Got me Lee soft graduated filter and my polarizer in the shot. Come on, come on. 15 seconds, like that, like that. Just a minute ago, I was down there, sort of shooting down there. Well, I've just come up here, and now I'm kind of shooting from here. The same kind of scene in the foreground, but slightly to the right, with Barry Ed in the end. A couple of things which go through my mind when I shoot a shot like this. If I've got headlands, I like to have the, head, the end of the headlands in my shot. So if I'm looking through the shot, I haven't just got a, a piece of land at the top. I like it that I've got a bit of land, and you can see the end of it, just the way my brain works just quite like it because there's a couple of rocks off the end there as well which I think look quite nice and the only thing that bothers me this is why I think you need a really high tripod in the foreground of this shot because I can't get too close to the edge I've kind of got the rock foreground that my tripod's on and I don't really like that in the shot I like it's just I don't like it and I can't really take it out of the shot because it will unbalance it but um you see what I mean when I put the picture up I've kind of got this, this rocks in the, this headlandy rocky bit in the foreground, which I, it's just bloody annoying, but I can't get out. I could do just getting up another 10 foot and it'd be cool. But this is a shot. I think, uh, what are we going for? Again, I've got my filters stacked on. My IRND six stop pro glass. My 0.6 soft graduated filter. My polarizer. I kept my polarizer on because it's given me a, well, it's blued up the sky, which is nice. Um, and it's extended my shutter speed to like 15 seconds, which I think is looking quite nice because it's not a huge amount going on, but there's a bit of movement and I'm kind of catching it in the exposure. This is what the shot looks like, focused on this rock here in the foreground. Cool. Bloody sun. Be time to go in for bracky in a minute. All right, up to now, pictures I've been taking from here and another one from up there all looking that way i really want they're all in portrait format and i want a nice landscape i'm going to test the test the nice wideness of this lens which i have um although i have just noticed that if i put my polarizer polarizer on i can't shoot at the widest end of 14 mil i need to go into about 15 uh 15 16 which is cool 16 mils as wide as you like so i quite like the idea getting my ass down here and putting the camera on the end of that rock there somewhere and i'll have that rock and that rock on my side looking through so it kind of kind of draw you in that's my idea 
ideally that would make probably a good portrait picture which i'll probably do anyway but i think a nice wide one details of the rocks left and right loads of what's going in the foreground there's a bit of cloud interest there so that's my plan i'm going to get down there um i've got my irnd6 stop on and i'm going to take my graduated filter down just in case right there's a few images taken from down there all ranging from around sort of five to eight seconds just me lee pro glass and me 0.66 soft graduated um again i think they look better in portrait format but i wanted to see if i could pull out as much detail because this new lens i've got is stupidly sharp i know the odf lenses were sharp but these rf lenses are something else they're crazy 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 sharp so yeah what do you think is the shots not bad shots i think they come out all right any guesses on the new lens the Canon F4 14 to 35. Lush, love it, sharp as you like. Like I said in my last video, I did have the Nissi 15 mil. But sometimes I like to just have a little bit of a zoom, not much, just a little bit of a zoom. Um, and this for me, 14 to 35 is just for landscape for me is bang on, perfect. The only thing I have noticed when I'm out, I've been walking the dog a couple nights this week. And the, the 24 to 105, sometimes that 105 is a nice bit of reach when you're looking down a pathway and through the trees and a gateway, but can't have it all. I've got my 70 to 200, which I can put on. But yeah, I'm not going to do a review on this yet because I've only had it a couple of weeks. But up to now, I opened some files the other day. The, the image stabilization, which they say is like five stops, is for video stupidly good. It is insane. I've got a gimbal at home for my SLR, for, SLR for my mirrorless camera here. So I want to try into my videos. I want to bring, because I live in such a nice place, I want to bring a bit of um, video. Not, yeah, kind of be well, I suppose, but just to show you where I live, because it's such such a nice spot here. I thought I could bring the gimbal out, get some nice shots, nice bit of B-roll, make it look nice for you. Or do you just want me banging my gums talking about shots and none of the um, none of the B-roll stuff? You'll shout. I've got ideas. I'm not making a film one day, but that's a whole other story. But anyway, the 14 to 35, stupidly sharp, image stabilization, I can it. And those shots of like a second and a half. Like I say, I'm not going to do a review yet because I've only had it a couple of weeks. But from what I've seen, I opened up files, some files the other day, and I was like, blimey, I don't even need to sharpen them. You know, they're that sharp. But bearing in mind, I come from Betamax, VHS, four channel TV, no HD back in the day. So, like I've said before, anything is it's amazingly good to me. I appreciate this new, new, new nice stuff. So, anyway, that's the vid. I'm going to go and get myself a new set of knees. Oh, cheers for watching. Cheers. Bye.